And actually, we decided that £93 million pounds would, would not make us happy eventually. I didn't. Yeah, we did. <laughs> that is recording, and so is There's that. a red dot on there. We're good to go. Okay. Right. So, episode number five. Now, we watched back the other four episodes, and the main thing we thought was waffle. <laughs> <laughs> we seem to spend a lot of time not really saying much. Not me. <laughs> he seems to be spending a lot of time not saying very much. Um, even I was falling asleep watching them. So, uh, <laughs> and that wasn't just because of Dipti's trance. <laughs> so we're going to be much more to the point. Concise. Specific. On point. Yeah. So we want you to learn something from watching these. And, you know, it wants to have some value. I know we are quite fascinating to watch <laughs> and very beautiful um, we should have our own comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, be good, you know, if you know, you can get something from this. So I will talk faster or not say so, so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> I won't have long pauses before my words. Okay, so quickly, what is the topic the of topic today? The topic of today, Dipti, is, and because it's going to be January when you watch this, is New Year's resolutions. Uh, mm. Do they work? Are they a good idea? Etc. Very topical. New Year's resolutions. I mean, this is probably um, a repeated message, isn't it? Over and over again, everyone makes New Year's resolutions and maybe you make the same ones every year on repeat and, you know, you get through January, February, and maybe it's okay, and then in March it all yeah. goes absolutely to pot. Why is that? You know. I like this time of year because uh, it's, I do like the reset, you know, it's yeah. like starting again almost, uh, even though it's, you know, really in your mind, but it's like, you know, time to start again, have a rethink and, you know, set a bit more of a, a bit more clarity going forward, I think. Yeah. So, um, but there's a big thing, isn't there? New Year's resolutions and uh, there's a big thing about them not really working, so... I don't think it's the New Year's resolution that doesn't work, obviously. I said so again. <laughs> we might have to just edit all his so's out. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's about how you... Well, the intention, first of all, of what you want. And I think the most important thing is why you want it. Why is that resolution or that goal or that intention important to you? Yeah. You know, why? If you know why it's important, then you're going to keep the reason of why it's kind of, even when it's difficult to maintain, you're going to keep that why in your mind. Um, and even if it's something like giving up something, actually, the other interesting thing is if we don't see it as giving up, we see it as what you're gaining instead, then the brain doesn't feel so kind of in sacrifice, you know, or, you know, a bit kind of grumpy about giving something up. We want to focus on what you're gaining instead. Okay. According to my one of my trainers uh, called Ian McDermott, who I think is one of the best trainers about, um, he said there's three reasons why we fail to achieve our outcomes, our goals. Uh, one, may, they may not be realistically achievable. They may be insufficiently motivating. And although they are desired, they may not be desirable from a wider viewpoint. Mm. And I think that's good as well, because, you know, if my goal is to climb Mount Everest, that is obviously going to affect you, yeah. isn't it? Because... It's probably going to take me two or three years to train. I'll be away a lot, and then there's a high chance I'm going to fall off because I don't like climbing. So, um, you know, you've got to be happy with it as mm. well, haven't you? You know, my work, you know, I'd have to take months off of work to train. They'd have to be happy with it. So, so it's good to look at the bigger picture, really. Yes, I agree with that. Can I just pause? I've just got a cough really badly. We have to edit this bit out. Okay. 
for Dipti, when it's just been Christmas and it's not good for her to stop working because as soon as she stops working, um, she seems to... Get ill. Yeah. So, that, so, 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 so. <laughs> that's why we don't like her to stop. Um, I've got strep throat. And I'm still doing this. Still working. I'm she, still doing this. She worked Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, <laughs> uh, Boxing Day. But the thing is, I love my work. I love my work. Yeah. So let's go back to... Um, what book was that, by the way, that you read that from? This is... Just a basic book about NLP, The Way of NLP by Ian McDermott and Joseph O'Connor. So, so. I like. I mean, keep saying so. <laughs> I like the first one. Can you read that out again? Uh, so, they may not be realistically achievable. Yeah, I mean, that's really quite simple, isn't it? If mm. your goal, like you climbing Mount Everest, is that realistically achievable? Well, it might be if you really did go for it and, you know, everyone, like he says, everyone was on board with it and you had all the support and you were doing it with, I don't know, a bigger goal in mind, like you're raising money for a charity mm -hmm. that, you know, was really important to you. So then you'd really invest because that's a bigger, that's what he says in the third one, isn't it? It's a wider purpose and exactly. a wider reason. Yeah. If it... But, I mean, I don't even like climbing over a fence. So. <laughs> and you've got a fear of heights. <laughs> he might have to have some hypnotherapy first. So, you know, that is actually setting, maybe, perhaps setting yourself up to fail. Mm. And then, you know, then you go backwards so many steps, don't but, you? But that could also be, like, I want to lo lose 20 kilos. Yeah. And that could be seen such a massive, far-off, you know, unachievable thing that you might give up as, you know... Um, as soon as you get back to work and someone offers you a donut with yeah. your coffee, you know. But if the goal was, you know, I, I want to lose uh, half a kilo, yeah, you know, that's probably much more achievable, isn't it? So you know? actually, bite-sized chunks are so much more achievable. And if you keep going with another bite-sized chunk on top of the other one, eventually, you know, you'll get there. It's, it goes back to the whole hare and tortoise, you know, idea. That fable or metaphor or story has been told over and over again in all the generations. And actually, it's been translated into kind of... I don't even know. I read this somewhere the other day. 56 global languages. Because... Wow. It might not be 56, that, that might not be the right number, but a lot of languages. 57. Be because, you know, it's, it's so part of our human nature. Um, you know, the hair is wanting to kind of go for it and, you know, puts everything into place and doesn't really think about things too much and just kind of wants to go on ahead. Um, but the tortoise does things in a very sort of methodical, slow, measured way and doesn't really worry about what's going on in the environment but does actually win the race. So I think that's a good metaphor. Yeah, yeah, yeah very good. Yeah, I always wondered what that story was about when I was at school. Really? Yeah, yeah. You didn't know? Oh, I didn't look at it quite so deeply. I don't, really? First time I heard it, yeah. That's so funny. Mm. <laughs> I just thought it was a story about two animals having a race. I always Tumbleweed. wondered why the hair. Why the hair? <laughs> I just didn't win because it was got, much faster. Have we got a tumbleweed <laughs> graphic? All right, a real um, tumbleweed, tumbleweed mm, graphic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, funny. Well, but like when I did my duathlon, I beat there because I was just faster than him, you know? Yes, but what did you do behind the scenes? I did the seven Ps. Let's just track back, because who's going to know who is Dare and what do you earth on you're talking about? So start again with this story. This is a good story, everyone. Pay attention. In 2015, I did a duathlon in Richmond Park in London. So that was a 10-kilometre run, 44-bike, 5K run. And my friend Chris Dare beat me by 1 minute 30 seconds. So the next year, I went into serious professional OCD sportsman mode. I got a personal trainer to do me a plan for like four months. I changed my diet. I got the very best bike going. I thought you were going to say very best hypnotherapist. I did actually got <laughs> hypnotherapy from Dipti. Um, and I mean, I lost loads of weight. I was training every day. I was 
I was epic, basically. And I, I think we've got some photos to show you. Oh, and also one more thing. You had a special... Cheerleader. <laughs> and uh, that was the big thing. Anyway, and I, the goal was, you know, it was very specific. I knew when the date was, you know, the actual time of the race. I knew the, the length of the race. Um, I'd done it before. You know, Dipti was on board. I was racing some friends. I had a clear picture of me beating my friend in the race. That's I have to say that did motivate me. And you um, had that um, repeating in your mind, didn't you? You had yeah. that running past him. When I was training, thing. I'd picture myself sprinting past him and turning, going. <laughs> and that happened. Yeah, it did straight away. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then what happened? Well, I just destroyed him by I don't know, 15 minutes or something and uh, yeah he ended up in the uh, first aid tent it's not um, funny it's, it's not, funny. not no it's I'm not, not funny. laughing at that um, at all but yeah so you know that was the seven p's proper planning and preparation prevented piss poor performance then that's the seven p's set again yeah. Pro- proper planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance there we go <laughs> but it was also you know, it was, the goal was expressed in the positive. I determined what I had to do. It was specific, yeah. the goal. I was clear about the evidence for achievement. So that shows you that actually it's not just about saying, I want to do this, the end. You have to actually get all the cogs or all, all the right kind of, all the ducks lined up, don't you? You do, yeah. To kind of make your commitment and move towards your intention in a kind of logical sequence. So your brain doesn't feel overwhelmed at the first hurdle and you're kind of giving yourself a really good kind of head start. And you've got your own internal cheerleader on yeah, board. internal and external. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, that's the mm. idea really. Um, I know Marissa Pia, who is a hypnotherapist that I follow, um, she talks about the internal cheerleader a lot. And I, I talk about the internal cheerleader. You've got an internal cheerleader in your brain and an internal critic. The critic is usually louder and the critic is the voice that you will always hear first because the critic wants to keep you safe. That's my jujitsu critic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the critical voice is there to protect you. It's there to keep you alive, essentially. It's there to make sure that you're not doing anything dangerous. And, you know, it keeps you protected, basically. Um, however, the critical voice isn't imaginative and it's not usually um it doesn't can't think outside of the box basically so it'll just kind of want you to do what you do all the time keep you safe you know and that sort of thing but your inner cheerleader is the kind of imaginative part of your brain the creative part of your brain the part that wants to kind of achieve things and move forward sees things from a different perspective and she or he are always going to get the pom-poms out and go, go you, you can do this. And it inspires you, fills you with confidence and makes you feel kind of like, you know, you can do this. Yeah, good. Do, I suppose I had a inner cheerleader, but uh, I had an external cheerleader. Me? I prefer to think I've probably got an inner like Spartan or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. So is that somebody's voice or is that somebody's... You know, is that I, someone you know? I have uh, my friend uh, who unfortunately passed away, Nick Dilks. Oh, um, yeah. And I always have him going, Come oh, on, top sir, you can do it. Oh. You know, he was like powerful and strong like a Spartan. So That's nice. Yeah, but you're my external cheerleader. So oh. It's a good combination. I've got to cough again. Oh, my Excuse goodness. Excuse me. <laughs> Now I've got another good story. Dipti's good at stories, and I'm borrowing this one again from Ian. I'm sure, Ian won't mind. So George Bernard Shaw once said that there are two tragedies in life. One is not to get your heart's desire; the other is to get it. Now he was no doubt thinking of all the other things that may come when you actually get what you wanted. And there's a story about King Midas. He wanted everything that he touched to turn to gold and that he got that but 
also that included his friends, his food and water. So it didn't go quite so well. So, you know, you need to bear in mind what it is you're actually asking for, I think. So. And it's also about balance, isn't it? You know, actually, we need to just as human beings, we are most happiest when everything is in balance. Um, example of we were talking about winning the lottery um, because in uh, the boys my my children well they're not children the teenagers they still have Christmas stockings anyway in their Christmas stocking they both got a lottery ticket and um, then it kind of encouraged us to talk about the conversation of what would happen if we won was it 93 million pounds or something mm -hmm. and actually we decided that 93 million pounds would, would not make us happy eventually. I didn't. Yeah, we did. <laughs> no, I didn't. And actually, we decided that 93 million pounds would, would not make us happy eventually. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, we did. <laughs> no, we said it would probably make you really happy, and then it would be so overwhelming, remember? Well, I think, yeah, it could definitely make some people unhappy. <laughs> we did have this conversation, I promise. Uh, yeah. Tell them the truth. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I would be very unhappy if I won 93 million. <laughs> okay. Uh, we were saying that that's not, that's overwhelming, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like too much it's, money yeah, for, see, for the average person to, to, to win. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not like you've accumulated that and you've kind of become wealthy over time. Yeah. If you're just kind of going about your normal everyday life and then suddenly, you know, you wake up and you look at your bank account and you've got ninety three million pounds in there. Yeah, you're gonna change, aren't you? Yeah, that's gonna be like all your friends aren't gonna be multi, multi millionaires, are they? So you're either gonna have to like you know, they're always gonna be I'm trying to borrow money off you, the thought. Well, you'd be suspicious as to who's your friend because yeah. they're your friend. Uh, are they your friend? Are they speaking to you because they just want a couple of million? Do you know what I mean? So mm. you'd probably get into paranoid thinking. Um, you'd get into kind of over, you know, overspending. Um, and I just think, you know, and I think, is there anyone who's won an amount like that? It would be really interesting mm. to to do the research. Has anyone won an amount like that and have, you know, been really successful and maintained yeah, their sure sanity? There I'm sure there are a few, but, yeah. you know, there's lots of stories of people that haven't. Yeah, so, yeah, um, interesting. Anyway, we didn't win the 93 million. No. <laughs> And which is just, I didn't want to win it anyway because I'd have been just miserable. I know, same here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, see, better than so. Anyway, good, good. anyway. Should we finish off with our last recommendations of books that we're reading? Oh no! Oops! So, yeah. can I tell you about the book I'm reading at the moment? It's actually a Christmas present from Toby, and it's it's a really good book. It's actually a, a sequel to uh, another book that I love. Um, the, the first book was The Chimp Paradox, and now the second one is called The Silent Guides, and it's by Professor Steve Peters. And basically, um, if you're interested in how the brain works, and you're interested in how human behaviour works, just get either the chimp paradox to start off with and this one because these books are absolute genius so that's that's my recommendation brilliant i would not prepared for this because all my books are over there can you get them so uh, excuse me uh. <laughs> Did I'm back. <laughs> I didn't think we were doing this this time. Sorry. Oh. So that's why I'm not prepared. Um, I have just started reading this, which is Stealing from the Future, and it's by Neil Crofts and Mark Thompson. We have talked about Neil before. He is a genius, and now he's written this book, and everyone should read it. It is about the future and leadership and authentic leadership and how we all need to you know step up and make changes in the world i haven't started reading it yet so um i can fill you in more when i've read it but good recommendation that
But Neil Croft is a genius anyway, isn't he? We well, think so. Yeah. yeah. So, good one. Yeah. 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 But we can talk more about our books in the next episode, I'm sure. <laughs> I think we need some mulled wine. But for now, happy January, yeah. I guess. Yeah, so good luck setting your New Year's resolutions. Yeah, and let us know how you get on and how, how you are staying motivated. Because, you know, that's, that's the whole kind of key, isn't it? How you keep that momentum going and stay on track. And I was going to... Uh, actually, when I did my triathlon, I got... My trainer was a guy called Ash. And I'll put his website there because he is a genius. lives in Australia, but he does do coaching online. And uh, I was always very grateful for his help. So thanks, Ash. I know you watched our last episode. You, I think you might have been our, our only viewer. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we have three fans. Okay. Three fans. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, okay. That's it. Yeah? yeah. All right. Well, nice to see you all and see you next time. Bye. Bye. You didn't do your subscribe here. So. Oh, yes. Do you need to do that? Because oh, it's yes. complicated, isn't it? Last, last. Yes, if I do it now. So if you like all our videos, uh, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. And here is the bubble of subscription. And also, you probably want to watch the rest of the Dippy and Toby show. So here is the playlist. There.